Hi everyone, welcome to my new video for high-end retouching in Affinity Photo for iPad. I'm going to show you the tools that I personally use and I'm going to speed through it because obviously I'm used to retouching my photos in a way that suits my style. We all have different styles and depending on who your client is, you will adjust to suit. So. I will just quickly show you them and retouching is pretty much straightforward. Again, it's just down to the choices that you make. Okay, so let's get into this. I've already got my image open in Affinity Photo for iPad and I'm just going to pinch to zoom. I'm just going to assess the image before I start. This image is going to be used for Instagram. I've just made a pixel layer and I'm just scribbling over the points, parts of the image that I would like to work on. At the moment, I'm just making notes that make sense to myself. <laughs> so apologies for that. And generally this is either blemishes I need to remove, texture I need to add in or remove, dodge and burn, etc. I use different colors all the time. They never really relate to anything. It's just, you just get sick of looking at the same one all the time. Personally, I do anyway. So I've just switched that off now. I've made my assessment and I'm using the clone stamp tool as always. This is generally how the clone, tam clone <laughs> stamp brush works. Couldn't even get my words out there. And you could see I can, you know, bring in parts of the image or remove parts of the image. So I've just shrunk the clone brush tool down and I've set the mode to lighten. And I'm just gonna use that to lighten these little dark areas on the image. And this is going pretty fast, it is all sped up. But you know, you can pause, you can slow this down to a speed that is better for you. I am going to do a full tutorial on well, a whole video on doing high-end retouching but for print there's a lot of difference in doing it for social media and for print i'm going to spend a lot more time on print because those mistakes are less forgiven this is just going on my grid on instagram so i've done my basic clean up here and i'm just making a black and white layer to go on top of my image this is just for to help me see the contrast and the tones that I do need to fix. It just takes away the colour so you do not have to think about it. And it helps quite a bit. I know when I'm actually photographing, I tend to have my camera switched into black and white mode and I'm shooting raw so it doesn't stay in black and white. But this just allows me to know like, if my tones are correct, I can work with the colour. So at the moment, I'm just dodging and burning on the image. So... I've made a curves layer, brightened it up, and I've set the layer mask to black. So with that set to black, I'm going to use a white brush. Oh, it's changed to blue. These things happen. I've noticed it happens quite a lot within Affinity. Not because of the program, but mainly because your fingers are literally touching everything and the shortcuts. And yeah, it takes a little while to get used to. But it, it, it is, it's great. So I'm just going in and going over the image. Just playing around with the black and white adjustment there. And let's play around with this color a little bit. So the main things that I do when it comes to retouching is the cleanup the dodge and burn, and then colour. While I think the iPad is fantastic for being able to do this kind of things, do well, these kind of things, um, it just makes it a tiny bit harder because you've got a whole new process and software to get used to. Um, if I was doing this on the computer, obviously, yes, I would have spent a little more time, my pressure sensitivity, my brushes, everything is set up to how I work. So my opacity is normally set to 70. My flow on my brushes is normally set to about 27. 
and that's just because of the way I hold my pen. I haven't quite worked out my preferences for this, so this is where I'm personally struggling. I'm not sure about if that happens for yous. Um, drop a comment down below if you do find this a little bit of an issue. It's just making that switch. You're so used to using one thing for so long and you've got to use something else and it just works slightly different. Just slightly, but just enough to throw you off. I don't think I will ever give up Photoshop, but I do like the freedom of having Affinity on my iPad for me to work absolutely anywhere. And I mean anywhere. <laughs> so it is. It's a fantastic program. Well, <laughs> I would say that I've dedicated a whole channel to it. I do honestly love working on my iPad. It's just a case of, like I said, getting used to it. Now, the results are pretty cool. Not the best. I could have spent a little more time in some places. But again, this is going on my Instagram grid. So it's most likely going to be a square crop at the end. So I will lose some of that extra texture towards the bottom that I haven't worked on as much, which I should have. Um, once you start retouching and going in and doing the things you need to do to your image, you know, you start to get a good eye for things. So it is just lots of practice, lots of repetition. Look at magazines, um, especially for different color grading, because, you know, it's it's seasonal. There's trends to it. Um, it's, it's a pretty hardcore subject. But as it stands, Affinity, iPad, Affinity Photo 4 iPad is, it's brilliant. Um, if you definitely want to get it retouching, it is a fantastic place to start. So I hope you like this video. Um, sorry, it was a short one. And there should be a full length one coming this weekend. So catch you all soon.